What is going on YouTube land? I am Chris Catalunya. Before we get into the shoe review, go ahead and check out my Instagram, Chris Catalunya with the underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And we are hitting it really close to that 10,000 subscriber mark here on this YouTube channel. Thank you for your support and subscribing to me. If you aren't subscribed already, you definitely will want to because once we hit 10K, I will give away a Supreme Super Soaker and a Supreme Floral Skateboard deck. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Saucony has been on a roll this 2019 and they are definitely making a statement in the sneaker community. Now, they have worked with companies such as Kith, they've worked with companies such as Sneaker Politics and Cafe Dumont on the Beignet release and to me, this is the sneaker of the year 2019, call me crazy. They've worked with Sneaker out of Charleston, South Carolina on this Carolina Mustard Shoes. They are just doing a lot everywhere and if you haven't heard the noise that they've been making this entire 2019 you've just been asleep this whole entire time Getting into the backstory of this Saucony Grid web shoe, back in the year 2000, which was a much more simpler time, all we were really worried about from a biblical standpoint was if January 1st, 2000, if the world was going to end right there, or Y2K, if the computers, when they hit January 1st, 2000, if the nuclear bombs would react to those computers, the, the date change, and then just fire off, and then we would all like just nuke ourselves. It was such a simpler time. Anyways, back in the year 2000, Saucony introduced the grid web shoe to the world. 19 years later, July 20th through 21st of 2019, this Saucony grid web shoe received a reactivation at ComplexCon Chicago. Now, my first impression, typically, I'm not really into the whole dad shoe scene. I'm not really into the Nike Air Monarch shoes. I'm not into that New Balance 623T. Those just don't do anything for me. But this shoe, I thought that the fusion with this chunky ass midsole with the retro futuristic design of the uppers, it was a great compromise. Looking at the different pictures on those blogs and editorials and seeing the shoe, I just really was regretting the fact that I did not book a ticket to ComplexCon Chicago. I really love this shoe. And I did pray for a public release of this shoe. Prayers answered, these shoes were made available on July 26th of 2019, and they were made available at select sneaker boutiques and the Saucony website. In which, if you go to the website right now, they're pretty much sold out. I think there's like a size 7 and a single size 14 left. They're pretty much sold out. These shoes retailed at a reasonable price point of $120 USD at your VAT or taxes just based on where you reside. I did indeed buy this shoe directly from the Saucony website and I really do love the Saucony website. This is not a paid endorsement or anything. I really do love the website because they offer free shipping and if you don't like the shoe, you have 45 days to return it. So that's all pretty cool. Also, in just Googling promo codes for the Saucony website, you can find a lot of them pretty easily and I actually paid for this shoe like a hundred dollars shipped which is not a bad deal again this retailed at hundred twenty dollars USD now concerning resale yes the shoe was released at ComplexCon yes people lined up for this shoe but resale on the shoe is pretty much non-existent if you go to the StockX website right now you'll see that there are only two shoes of these or two pairs of these that sold Upon receiving shipment, we are presented with this cardboard shoe box in the purple and turquoise theming. You'll see some of that Saucony branding going all around the box. At the front, we have the sizing label, and then at the back, we have this prompt, which pretty much talks about the where the Saucony name derived from and the correct pronunciation of Saucony. So it's not Saucony, it's Sock. 
a knee. And so the Sakoni name actually comes from Pennsylvania. There was a Native American tribe that inhabited a particular area over there. And there was a river that goes around. And the Saucony name actually is derived from swiftly running water. So if you look at the logo, you can kind of see it. It's like the river making little ripples. And in opening the box, we get that white tissue paper with Saucony branding all over. This shoe is hella slept on. It looks too good in hand. The upper of the shoe is comprised of several different materials. You have that web design that is going all around the upper of the shoe and it makes that transition from black to blue towards the bottom. And this is made out of a TPU unit which functions as structure for the shoe. Behind that webbing is a padded white loose mesh material, enabling the shoe to be lightweight and very breathable. Of course, prominent and in your face, you're going to see that Saucony S on the lateral and the medial sides of the shoe, and it has a yellow orange hue to it, which gives the shoe a lot more pop. Both the heel cup and the toe box area of the shoe are done up in a leather material and they feature black lines going across to give it more of that retro futuristic effect and I like that these lines actually bleed on to the midsole, pretty cool. There is some 3M reflective material at the toe box of the shoe and I'm kind of confused because they didn't implement 3M anywhere else on the shoe but I guess that's okay. Moving back to the heel cup, below all of these layers, there's actually a TPU plate in here. And you can see it's actually really, really sturdy. It's pretty hard to press this TPU plate down. Now, this just tells you that the shoe has a lot of stability. The lacing system, it actually features the eyelets of the shoes in loop form on the inside panels. Now, the laces that they provide us are of a black color, a nylon or polyester build, and of a rope shape. Towards the very front, or I guess the bottom of the shoelace panel, you'll see this neoprene protector right here and three dots, which is part of that Saucony branding. You'll see the three dots on the S logo right there. Behind those sets of laces is the padded tongue, and this is pretty much enclosed within neoprene and mesh material. At the top of the tongue, we have that S logo done in gray. Both the collar and the lining of the shoe is done in a black neoprene material, definitely my favorite material. At the heel of the shoe, you'll see the S logo right here, and as we reach in the inside, the lining on the lateral, the medial, and the heel is very well padded for your ankle's comfort. In removing the insole, you'll see that it's done on a black piece of fabric on a thin piece of white foam. At the heel, you'll see the Saucony branding with those same orange and yellow hues going on. Moving on to the midsole of the shoe, which is a huge proponent of this shoe. It's hella hella chunky and it's comprised of EVA foam. Now let's talk technology, how Air is to Nike, Boost is to Adidas, Absorb is to New Balance, Grid is the proprietary technology for Saucony, it is what they employ. Grid technology, you can actually see it on this yellow midsole right here, G-R-I-D, it was introduced in 1991 and it's actually an acronym standing for Ground Reaction Inertia Device. The idea behind this technology was to provide stability without sacrificing impact resistance. If you need me to put this into more visual form, it was supposed to mimic the look and react the same way as a tennis racket. And so they created this grid cassette and put it inside the shoe. In color, the midsole is represented with this white EVA foam that goes all the way around the shoe, the lines at the front and the back of the shoe, this yellow right here. And on the medial side of the shoe, you'll see some of these black specks along there. The outsole is predominantly done up in a blown rubber material, enabling flexibility and durability. We have the signature Saucony triangles right here. We have some different colors going on, like the navy, and then your wave markings at the back of the shoe. In the middle of the shoe, we have a TPU plate in the arch area. Sizing, normally I'm rocking a size 8.5 or a 9 US, 8.5 being my true to size. When it does come to Sauconys, I can attest that they fit true to size. In terms of comfort, it definitely feels like I'm walking on clouds when I'm wearing the shoe and that might not be a first thought for you especially since the shoe looks super super heavy and super super chunky but it's actually a pretty lightweight shoe. From the breathable mesh uppers to the grid infused midsoles to the lining that is heavily padded, overall this is a pretty comfortable shoe and I don't have anything bad to say about this shoe. Overall, the resurgence of the Saucony Grid web shoe in 2019, 19 years after it debuted, is a welcomed one. That retro futuristic design, that dad shoe, all at an affordable price of $120 USD. The Saucony Grid web. There is no reason, no excuse on why you did not cop this banger of a shoe.
Again, Socket has been making noise in 2019, and I'm really excited to see what they come up in Q4 and Q1 of 2020. It's only going to get better from here. Alright guys, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. What do you think about the Saucony Grid web shoe? What do you think about its re-release 19 years after it debuted? And have you caught any Saucony's recently? Let me know it down in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my Instagram, Chris Catalunya with the underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And again, we are hitting it close to that 10,000 subscriber mark here on this YouTube channel. Thank you for your support if you're subscribed already. If you're not, you know what to do. All right, guys, I am Chris Catalunya, and we will check you next time. Cheers. Sigina.